Hi, this is Chris, and we are taking a look at question 16 here in Math Module 1 of Digital SAT Practice Test 1. And here it says the number of bacteria in a liquid medium doubles every day. There are 44,000 bacteria in the liquid medium at the start. And so that's going to be the key here, is whenever they give you this original value, whatever you're starting with, our setup for any exponential function is going to have that starting value and then you're going to multiply by whatever your base is will tell you how that value is being changed so we should see this general structure which means we can eliminate a and b right away and then if it doubles so it says that it doubles every day so if we had to guess is that going to be a base of two or a base of one half for something to double, that means it's getting bigger, which means our base has to be a value greater than one. So it would have to be two. And then the T represents the number of days. So if it's gonna go on for 10 days, that means it's times two times two times two times two, 10 times. So that's where we get that exponent and that matches what we see in answer choice D. But the main thing to take away is that this first number here for these exponential relationships this is gonna be your original amount. This is what you start with. And then from there, you multiply by the appropriate change for anything that's gonna have an exponential increase to it. Let's take a look at number 17. A cylinder has a diameter of eight inches and a height of 12. What is the volume in cubic inches? So here, a cylinder is gonna have a volume and in your resources, they do actually give you that equation, but I think that's one that's worth knowing just so that we don't have to take the time on test day. It's the area of your base, which is just pi r squared because your base is a circle, and then times the height. So here, we're gonna do pi times our radius. Now keep in mind here, they say diameter is eight, which means the radius is gonna be four. So this would be four squared and then times a height of 12. That's 16 times 12. We don't have to multiply out by the pi. If you notice here, all of your answer choices are in the form of pi, so we can leave that as is. So here we just do four squared, which is 16 times 12, and that's gonna give us 192 times pi, which is answer choice C. Let's take a look at number 18. So this one is a system of equations, and they want to know the value of y. So if we're trying to solve for y, what we should aim to do if we can is eliminate x. So to do that, we can multiply this second equation by negative 3 so that we'll end up with a negative 6x in that equation, and then we can cancel out our x's. So if we do that here, that would leave us with the first equation doesn't change. That's 6x plus 7y equals 28. And our second equation, after we distribute the negative 3, remember you do have to distribute it to everything on both sides of the equation. A lot of people forget to multiply here this constant by that same coefficient by that negative 3. So just be careful. It's everything times negative 3. So that'll leave us with negative 6x minus 6y and that'll be equal to negative 30. And now when we combine these equations, the 6x's cancel. 7y minus 6y leaves us with y. Positive 28 minus 30 gives us a negative 2. And because we were smart about which variable that we eliminated to begin with, we don't have to worry about plugging that back in to try to then solve for the other variable. A lot of people always solve for x because they're just so used to it. But keep in mind what they're asking. Here they want the value of y. So we want to go ahead and cancel out the x to start. And we get our answer as y equals negative 2. Now let's try question 19. And so for this one, they describe a triangle and they say that the cosine of k is 24 over 51 and angle j is a right angle. What is the value of cosine of l? So this one, I would say, is probably going to be pretty tough to do mentally. We try to avoid having to draw things out or create visual representations where possible, but this one, I think, is 
really to explain it, we're going to need to see it. So they say J is the right angle. So that would be here. And then the K and the L don't really matter which one you label as which, so long as you plug in the correct value for the cosine in the right places. And here we're going to use SOHCAHTOA. And hopefully we've seen that before. But that tells us our sine is equal to our opposite over our hypotenuse. Our cosine is equal to our adjacent side over our hypotenuse. And our tangent is equal to our opposite side over our adjacent side. And so what we really care about here is this cosine relationship, the ka part of soka toa. So here, your cosine of k is 24 over 51, and that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine k, it's going to be your adjacent side, which means the side next to that angle, the leg next to it, over the hypotenuse, which is always going to be your longest side, which is across from the 90 degree angle. So here, our adjacent side will be 24, our hypotenuse will be 51. And now, we have to try to figure out the other side, because here we have cosine L is what they're asking for, which means for the cosine of L, we need to find this adjacent side over here. We know it's going to be over 51, because it's over the hypotenuse, just like the other one was. But we have to see if we could somehow try to find what that other side is going to be. Now we could use Pythagorean theorem, and you could use calculator for that. And if you do, you'll get some pretty big numbers. But again, with calculator, it's not going to be so bad. But you might even recognize, and if you do, it's great. If not, no worries, that this is actually the expansion of a common Pythagorean triplet, which is an 8, 15, 17 right triangle. And here, each side is simply being multiplied times 3. So 8 times 3 is 24, 15 times 3 is 45, and 17 times 3 is 51. If you happen to catch that relationship, that's awesome. It might save you a little bit of calculator work. If not, no worries at all. We can do good old Pythagorean theorem and answer this relatively straightforwardly. We have 24 squared plus b squared equals 51 squared. And when we do that, we're going to get b squared equals 2025. After we subtract those, take the square root, b equals 45. So if you catch that Pythagorean triplet, that's amazing. You can save a little bit of work and a little bit of time. If not, no worries. Pythagorean theorem is a great tool to rely on for finding the missing side of a right triangle. And now we know that our cosine of L is our adjacent side, which is 45 over 51. And that's what we'll put in for our student provided response. Stay tuned and we're gonna finish up this section in our next video as we dive into question number 20. Thank you.